Dagobert II was the king of Austrasia, the son of Sigebert III and Chimna, child of Burgundy. He is also accounted a saint by the Roman Catholic Church. His feast day is 23 December. Biography Dagobert II was the son of Sigebert III, an Austrasian king of the Merovingian line. The Arnulfing mayor of the Austrasian palace, Grimwald the Elder, the son of Pippin of Landen, and Dagobert's guardian, had had his own son Childebert adopted by Sigebert III, when Sigebert was still childless. Then when Sigebert died in 656, Grimwald seized the throne for his own son and had Dagobert tonsured, thus marking him unfit for kingship and exiled. The tale that Dagobert was ordered to be killed and his death published about but that he was spirited out of the country, seems to be an embellishment, perhaps developed to explain the silence of Dagobert's mother chimney child. She may have cooperated with Grimwald to set up Childebert the adopted, later she hoped by marrying her daughter Billy Child to Childeric II to keep the eventual Austrasian heir in her bloodline. It has also been hypothesized that Chimna Child was not Dagobert's mother, thus her reason for abandoning him. Dagobert was given to the care of Desiderius, Bishop of Poitiers, where there was a cathedral school. The boy was sent on to a monastery in Ireland, sometimes identified as slain, to be further trained as a page at an Anglo-Saxon court in England. An old tradition relates that he married Mechthilda, an Anglo-Saxon princess, during his exile. But the tradition that among his daughters was Saint Hermin, abbess of Oerin, and Saint Adule, abbess of Falza, of fabrications perhaps designed to link the saintly foundresses of these abbeys with the revered Merovingian line. In the meantime the great nobles of Austrasia appealed to Clovis II, king of Neustria, who expelled the usurpers, executing Grimwald and Childebert, and added Austrasia to his own realm. The dating of these events is greatly confused. They occurred perhaps as early as 657 or as late as 661, under Clotaire III, Clovis' son. The effective ruler, however, was the Neustrian major Domo Ebroin, who was obliged soon thereafter to give the Austrasian realm a king of its own once more. The choice was the child king Childeric II, brother of Clotaire III, with the mayor of the palace, Wilfold as regent. The young king was assassinated on a hunt near Maastricht in 675, and in the chaotic power struggle that ensued, the Austrasian magnates, who wanted a king of Merovingian blood, pressed Wolfold for the return of Dagobert, while opponents of Wolfold acclaimed one Clovis III possibly an imposter. Ebroin returned from a monastic retirement to lead Clovis' partisans, but Wolfold effected Dagobert's succession in 676, partly through the help of Wilfred, Bishop of York, on Clovis' untimely death. In spite of the continuing bitter enmity of Ebroin and the party who had attempted to press Clovis as an alternate candidate, Dagobert was restored to a portion of his rightful lands, a territory along the Rhine, which pious tradition relates that he governed with the mildness and piety his childhood experience had taught him, but which history suggests he left largely to the mayor of the Austrasian palace, while he concerned himself more with the founding of cloisters and abbeys, including Serberg and Wissenberg in Alsace, where the duke was his cousin. Nonetheless, he was undoubtedly an intelligent, educated man, an adult at the time of his succession, who could not be completely controlled by factions and mayors. The dynamics of Dagobert's career are largely a passive reflection of the competition between two sources of power, patronage and prestige, the palace institutions of Neustria on the one hand, and on the other, of Austrasia firmly in the control of the Arnulfing dynasty that would become the Carolingians in the following century. In the chaos, the search for a consistent, rational pattern is hard to follow in the shifting loyalties.
During revived conflict between Neustria and Austrasia, Dagobert in his turn was murdered in another hunting incident on December 23, 679, near Stenisur Meuse in the Ardennes, probably on orders from Ebroin, still mayor of the palace in Neustria. Wilfred must have remained in Austrasia until this time, because, according to his biographer, Wilfred left Austrasia after the death of Dagobert in mortal danger from the supporters of Ebroin. At the cloister of Stenai afterwards there grew a cult of Dagobert, venerated as early as 1068 as Saint Dagobert. The cult spread from there into Lotharingia and Alsace, and Saint Dagobert is recognized by the Roman Catholic Church, like his father and many royal Merovingians. After Dugobit's brief reign, leaving his lands without a male heir, the lords of the Rhineland divided the territory among themselves, while Pippin II, mayor of the Palace of Austrasia dominated Austrasia, and left the throne empty until after the Battle of Tertri, when he accepted Theuderic III, Renlis Chateau. The name of Dugobit II achieved renewed prominence from the early 1960s when Pierre Plantard fabricated a myth claiming he was descended from this monarch as part of his myth of the Priory of Sion, claiming that Dugobit II had married a Visigothic princess in the village of Rennes-le-Château. Two sets of parchments were fabricated by Philippe de Cherisy, Plantard's friend containing encrypted messages in modern French within medieval Latin texts that served as part of alleged proof of the existence of this hidden history. Allegedly found by the 19th century village priest bearing a sonnier whilst renovating his church. Another fabrication were the alleged Merovingian genealogies that appeared in the dossier's secrets planted in the Bibliothèque Nationale de France in 1967. This story was published as historical fact in a 1960s French book by Gerard de Seder, entitled Le Trésor de Rennes-le-Château, that also reproduced Philippe de Cherisy's fabricated parchments. Henry Lincoln, a screenwriter for British television, spotted the encrypted message within one of the parchments when buying Gerard de Sed's book whilst on holiday in the Savenus in 1969 in, unaware of the hoax, managed to persuade the BBC Two archaeological series Chronicle to make three documentaries devoted to this story. Henry Lincoln, along with Michael Bident and Richard Lee later wrote the book The Holy Blood and the Holy Grail, first published in 1982. They attempted to put forward the hypothesis that Jesus Christ had married Mary Magdalene and sired a child who had later married into the Merovingian line, and that the assassinated Dagobert II had really had a secret male heir who had been spirited away to his mother's hometown of Rennes-le-Château after his father's death and who was part of this Jesus bloodline. It was later shown that much of the research in Holy Blood Holy Grail was based on the forged parchments and fabricated Merovingian genealogies. However, the hypothesis gained further popularity when it was incorporated into the 2003 best-selling novel The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown. Because Brown claimed the story about the Priory of Sion was factual, many debunking books and documentaries resulted, further bringing the little-known name of Dagobert into the limelight.